x plus y equals 5 is an equation, but equations like this one are different than the equations we've solved so far because there are many answers. We see two variables, right, x and y. The equation shows that they're related to each other, but there are many possibilities for making the equation true. We can show these possibilities in a couple of ways. One is with, with a table, and I can draw that table either horizontally, putting x and y like this, or vertically with x and y like this. Another way of showing the answers is as coordinate points. And let's look at these, these um, three different ways using a few points. So one possible answer is I could say x is 1 and y is 4. And you'd write that like this vertically. Or as coordinate points, I would say the first coordinate is x and the second coordinate is y. Right? Or I might have an answer two, x is 2 and y is 3. All of these methods would write the solution like that. Or could even say x is 3 and y is 2. And you can see how we could continue like this. But there's even more solutions because I could also make x negative. Let's say negative 2. And if x were negative 2, then I would need a positive 7 in order to make 5. And as coordinates points, negative 2 comma 7. And I can go even further. Let's make x one half. And that would mean y would have to be four and a half to make five. Yeah, and same thing as coordinate points. And I can also use decimals. I could have said 0.5 and 4.5 or something like 3.7 and 1.3. And I can do that also with negatives, with decimals and fractions as negative numbers. So in fact, there are an infinite number of solutions to x plus y equals 5. I could keep going forever and ever and not be able to write down all the solutions. So tables and coordinate points can help us a little bit, but there's actually another way of showing all the solutions, and that's using a graph. When we use a graph, we can illustrate all the solutions, at least theoretically, just like we used a graph to illustrate all the solutions to inequalities. Remember something like x is bigger than 3. Well, we'd, we could write down all the solutions, right? 3.1, 3.2, or maybe we just stick to integers, 4, 5, 6, and then use something like dot, dot, dot to show we keep going. Or we can put that on a graph. Remember we did that with a 0, and then we'd mark in where 3 was. There's 3, and since it doesn't include 3, open circle, and then say x is all the values bigger than that. That's one way of showing multiple solutions, because all the solutions are not just the points, but the, the integers, but all of these points along this line. For x plus y equals 5, we're going to do something similar, but we need a two-dimensional graph, what we call a coordinate plane, because we have two variables. So I need a number line for each variable. If we graph all of the points we got as solutions on this coordinate plane, you will see a pattern. The x values will put on the horizontal number line, and the y values will put on the vertical number line. So take these values that we already calculated. Let's do 1 and 4. So 1 in the horizontal direction, and 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 vertically, so put a little x there, and then 2 and 3, 3 and 2, negative 2 and 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1 half and 4 and a half, right there in the middle. What you start to see is that all of these points are on the same line. That's why we call these types of equations linear functions. I can join them together. And then 
not just those points, but I can extend it farther out onto the graph as far as I have. And generally, we also put little arrows on either side to show that this line continues off to infinity. And every single part of the line, all along this line, I've illustrated the solutions to x plus y equals i. There are different methods used to draw the graph of a line from an equation like this one. And generally, we don't have to use as many points. So in this section, we're going to do it off of a table of values, but we won't make five or six or 10 points off of it. Usually to make a straight line, we need at least two, but just to anchor it, three is better, especially if the points are quite close to each other. So you're generally going to use zero, one, and two. We could use negative numbers as well, but then it always involves more complicated calculations. So let's use 0, 1, and 2, but realize you could pick any numbers for x. Let's do another example. Our new equation is 3x minus y equals 2, and we're going to graph the line described by this equation. Now, I'm going to plug in values for x. Remember, we'll use 0, 1, and 2. But if I do that to this equation, I'm going to have to constantly rearrange the equation in order to figure out what y is. Right? Whatever value I put here for, for x, I will then move that over onto the other side by subtracting it, and then I'll have to multiply or divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negative. So sometimes it's easier to take the equation and rearrange it with the variables to solve for y. This is what this is called, solve for y. Pretend y is the thing you're trying to find, because that's what we're going to be doing later. We're going to be plugging in or substituting for x and then finding out what y is. So we'll just do that once with the whole equation, and then that will be easier. So I'm going to start by adding y to both sides, because then it will be positive on the other side. I get 3x equals 2 plus y. And then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get 3x minus 2 equals y. And now I want y first, so I'll just rewrite that the other way around. y equals 3x minus 2. And that's the pattern I'm going to use when I substitute values for x, because then I don't have to rearrange it every time. So we're making y the subject of the equation. That's the way we described it in chapter 9. So now I can make my table of values. If I substitute 0 for x, I'll get 3 times 0, that's 0, and then minus 2 is going to give me a negative 2. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2, makes the y-coordinate for x equals 1, also 1. And substituting in 2 makes 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. So I have three points. I now need to use a ruler and make my coordinates, my coordinate plane. Straighten out this one a little bit. Okay, this is coordinate plane x and this is coordinate plane y. You can also put the arrows showing the coordinate plane goes off into the negative region as well. And then we'll plot the points. Zero, in the x direction and negative 2 in the y direction is there, 1, 1 is there, and 2, 4 is there. I'll pull out a ruler okay, and line up my ruler with the points, and then draw a straight line that extends beyond my points and crosses through all those three lines. I can also put on the arrows on either side to show that it goes on forever. Okay, here's another type of question that comes up in the homework. Any point that lies on that line that you've drawn will satisfy the equation of the line if you substitute the coordinates of the point for x and y. So to satisfy an equation, 
means to make the equation true. So here's a possible question. Is the point 6, 7 on the line y equals 2x minus 5? But I could have also asked it like this. Do the coordinates 6, 7 satisfy the equation y equals 2x minus 5? In both situations, or both types of questions, I'm asking the same thing. I'm going to substitute 6 and 7 into y equals 2x minus 5, and then see if it makes the equation true. So 7 is the y-coordinate, so I plug that in for y, and 6 is the x-coordinate, so I'm going to substitute that for x, and then I look at the left-hand side. That one's pretty easy because the left-hand side, there's no calculations, it's equal to 7. And the right-hand side is going to be equal to 12 minus 5, and 12 minus 5 is equal to 7. Okay, so the, this point, 6, 7, is going to be on this line. If I would draw, any, draw this on a graph, then I would find that 6, 7 was exactly right on the line. So because let the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, therefore, 6, 7 is a point on the line y equals 2x minus 5.